Hello to everyone all over the world who might be watching this. My name is Rami Ibrahim. To many of you, you might know me as a professional Muay Thai fighter. But today, I will be a freedom fighter. I will be talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Some of you uh, favor the Palestinian side and some of you favor the Israeli side. Now, no matter what side you favor, I want you to, to remember this. When you talk about a sensitive topic such as this, do not shut the other person down. Hear them out and listen to what they have to say so you can get to know them better. Take it like a fighter when a fighter steps into a ring. A fighter steps into the ring, not a smart thing for the fighter to do is to know the pros and cons of his opponent. He shouldn't just step into it not knowing or just, you know, with uh, emotions. Now, you should do the same thing. You should get to know the other side. Know what the, what's good about them and what's bad about them. Get to know them really good. And then make a decision. We want to go into this Israeli-Palestinian conflict but back when before everything started. Palestine, uh, which was part of the bigger Arab world, was under the Ottoman Empire rule. Toward the end of the Ottoman Empire rule, the people in power under the rule of the Ottoman Empire started mistreating the Palestinians and the rest of the Arab world to the point uh, where they wanted their freedom to be ruled by themselves. During the end of the empire, Zionism was created by uh, Theodore Herzl with the plot of uniting the Jewish people into one of three places, Chile, Uganda, and of course Palestine. They decided to convince the Jewish people that they uh, should go to Palestine because it was the easiest. Off the basis uh, of that, it was the promised land from God given to them thousands of years ago. And that's how they can get all the Jews to leave their homes and go to a new place. At first, since Palestine was under the Ottoman Empire, they tried to suggest to their leader to sign on the dotted line so he can give them Palestine. He said, I don't own Palestine, that Palestine is a holy land, and that the uh, Palestinian people uh, own that land and I will never sell it. So the Zionists started working on the British government. So the British and the French, uh, they came to the Arab leaders at that time and told them that um, your enemy is my enemy. Why don't you fight with us to defeat the common enemy and if we win the war, you guys will get your freedom. So after World War I, the Ottomans lost the war. So instead of the Arab world getting their freedom, they were deceived by the British and the French. And in turn, Palestine and all the Arab world became occupied by the British and the French, except for Libya, which fell under the Italian rule. They divided the whole Arab world into 22 countries, almost 50-50 uh, between the British and the French rule. That is when uh, Palestine fell under the British rule, which led to the Balfour Declaration that happened on November 2nd, 1917. من دم الأطفال ها اختصار لما أتذكر هنهار بتهلك 
الأعصاب دناي بتطلع بخاب وقول الله يسترني سقط هالنحس وضربني بفضل إنه الله يقبرني Thus the Jews won the war, and instead of the Jews getting 45% that they were promised, they took more and actually ended up with 78% of the land, leaving 22% of the land for the Palestinians, which was the West Bank that was under the Jordanian rule, and the Gaza Strip that was under the Egyptian rule. They left the West Bank and Gaza Strip to the Palestinians, not because they wanted to be nice, but uh, because there wasn't any Jews living there, so it would be the smart thing to, to leave it alone and surround themselves around them. Gaza uh, was a special case because it was a very small piece of land where it was so crowded with the now having tw two million people living in it. So it was a headache for the Israel to spend a lot of money to defeat uh, that many Palestinians. Israel Prime Minister at that time, Sharon, said, uh, I wish I sleep and wake up and see the the sea swallow Gaza. The Jews started using uh, crimes and massacres in some of the villages as a way to scare the Palestinians and force uh, the other uh, force them from the other villages and uh, and leave without a fight. When the Palestinians heard uh, of the genocide committed by Israel on villages like Dar Yassin and Kibya, they panicked whenever they heard Israel's were coming and uh, fled running away for their lives leaving everything behind. That's what caused what we have now, the Palestinian refugees that are in Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan, and other places. That remained the case until 1967 when uh, talks about war was taking place by Israel and Egypt for that land. And then the United States declared that whoever starts a war is going to be punished by the United States and the whole world community. So the Egyptians said to the world, we're not going to start the war, but um, that wasn't the case with Israel. Israel deceived the whole world community, and of course the Arabs and waged a sneak attack, taking the Egyptians by surprise, which was the Six Day War. Within the first hours of the war, they destroyed the whole runway for the airport and all their planes, crippling the Egyptian army. So the war was over in no time. The United States said if anyone starts the war, they will be punished. But when Israel started the war, nothing was done to them. It was an obvious deception by Israel and the United States. As the end of this defeat, Israel captured the remaining 22% of Palestine and uh, Golan Heights in Syria and Sinai in Egypt. After this, there were some clashes and battles for six years from 1967, 1967 until the 1973 war when the Egyptian army got um, their strength back from the defeat and were better prepared to be able to fight back. The Arabs won the war and they could have achieved more from Israel if it wasn't for the United States who intervened using their satellite images uh, giving Israel some information during the war, giving Israel some key information because uh, the Egyptians were advancing. That's aside from the United States supplying Israel with weapons in order to, for Israel not to be defeated completely. Egypt was, um, won the war because they got Sinai back and destroyed the line of uh, Barleaf, which in, in the eyes of the world was indestructible and will never be destroyed. But the Egyptians managed to actually destroy uh, this line and get Sinai back. Years afterwards in 1978, the Egyptian government decided uh, to have a peace treaty with Israel, and that was it. Years later, though, in 1988, Yasser Arafat, the, the, pres uh, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, aka PLO, chairman declared to establish a Palestinian state 
and he agreed to establish a Palestinian state only on the 22% on what was originally all of the land of Palestine in the first place up until 1948. In 1988, Arafat proclaimed an, uh, an independent Palestine state on the West Bank and Gaza and told the United Nations that the PLO renounced terrorism. He said the PLO supported the right of all parties to live in peace, Israel included. In 1993, the peace process started, you know, four years later, that is. Uh, it was only on paper, though. It was on the, the promise to return the land for peace. But what happened since the peace process started was uh, the illegal settlement started increasing and more than quadrupled than when the peace process started. So while uh, Israelis were telling the world about peace, they were capturing more land, sending more settlers from all over there to live on the land that was supposed to be given back to the Palestinians. So Israel was lying to buy more time. Their actions were not uh, of someone who wanted peace. If they wanted peace, why would they kick Palestinians out their homes or demolish their land only to build more settlements and bring settlers over to live on the land that was supposed to be returned back to the Palestinians? If you look now on the map, you will see illegal settlements next to almost every single Palestinian town or city which makes it almost impossible to create a Palestinian state or country when you have to go to a checkpoint uh, if you want to go from one town to another. There's no progress to a Palestinian state till now. Imagine if you wanted to go from Brooklyn to Manhattan, you had to go through a checkpoint by someone who does not even live there. It's your country, but you have to go through a foreign power in order to go from one city to another. This is where we stand right now. Palestinians live in what uh, every nation agrees on calling occupied territory, which means the Palestinians are living on a land with occupiers who impose their will on them. Where we stand now, in the West Bank, is uh, Israel is still building illegal settlements, still demolishing infrastructure, imprisoning innocent men, women, children at will for protesting and not being okay with what's being done to them. Building uh, the most, uh, it's built actually, built the most illegal wall to ever be built separating the Palestinians and cutting more towns and homes within each other in half called the apartheid wall. Of course the United Nations and the rest of the world are not okay with this, but nobody can tell Israel to do anything. There's a lot of uh, resolutions against Israel, but none of them got enforced because Israel is spoiled child and when it comes to Israel, nobody can force Israel to do anything. There's a lot of resolutions for Israel to give back the land that it, ca it captured, to allow people to simply go back to their homes, you name it. It was brought up, but it's only on paper. Nobody enforces it because Israel is back, backed up by the United States, which is, uh, in a way, the United Nations because the United States imposes its will on the United Nations because it's a superpower and pays most of the, the money for the United Nations. Well, we stand now in Gaza after 2006 when, the, uh, when they had a free election between the Palestinians and the people uh, voted uh, for Hamas. Uh, which is a group of freedom fighters who fight for the people over the PLO. The Palestinian people voted for Hamas over PLO because um, they were not happy with the performance of the PLO on how they were running things and uh, the Palestinian people started looking at the PLO as not staying poor uh, when it came down to Palestinian principles which is you don't give a land back and forget about your refugees. So uh, they were softening up and giving in. Whereas Hamas, on the other hand, ran uh, their organization to the best of their ability, keeping Gaza protected and making, uh, making Gaza the most civilized place for the Palestinians at that time, that is, you know. 
The Palestinian people looked at Hamas as a uh, strong people who were honest and always keeping their word. So because the Palestinian people needed change, they voted for Hamas. And of course, Israel didn't like that or want that. And of course, the United States didn't want that also. Because they looked at Hamas as a, as a, as a threat because it fought back against uh, what Israel is doing. So they called them a terrorist group to the world. Even though Hamas won, the PLO still runs the West Bank and that is because uh, from day one, uh, when Hamas won, Israel uh, isolated and uh, choked Hamas by keeping them under siege in Gaza, closing their borders from anything or anyone going in or out. From 2006 till now, they have no freedom of movement, electricity gets shut off uh, on, uh, on them randomly for as long as they want. They cut off their water plan, took away their jobs, aid is not allowed in, not even food is allowed to be brought in freely. Too many people uh, who know of the situation in Gaza, they call Gaza as the biggest open air prison in the world. This is going on and Israel, is going, uh, Israel goes on to argue with uh, why Hamas fights back. Keep in mind Hamas has only minimum weapons and uh, they're not even a quarter percentage of Israel's up-to-date high-tech weapons, bombs, missiles, jet planes, etc. Therefore, Hamas is left with fighting only with rockets that are no good uh, and rarely uh, reach anything of significance because they have uh, Hamas uh, uh, with no planes uh, and Hamas has no army or base or any high-tech weapons to fight back with in the first place. In 2009, they captured an Israeli soldier who they did not kill and uh, they kept him alive in order to free close to a thousand Palestinians that Israel uh, illegally imprisoned. People around the world believe the lie that Israel and the United States uh, say about Hamas fighting back near or around civilian areas such as hospitals and, house, uh, and houses in order for Hamas to be protected. Uh, what people don't know is uh, Hamas doesn't have an army. They don't have borders to fly from. They don't have the F-16s and the most advanced jet planes uh, and fly high in the sky or hide under bunkers like the Israelis do. They don't have those means or luxury to hide and let their planes shoot missiles from far away. Uh, Palestinians have limited weapons so they fight with what they can. They don't have borders, they don't have a country in Gaza. Hamas lives on a flat land and uh, one of the smallest places with the most populated places on earth so they take and fight with what, they, with what they got. Therefore Hamas doesn't use these civilians or civilian areas like Israel always uses as a lie on the news. It's not as, uh, as if they have anywhere else to fight from. Where can they hide? Gaza doesn't have mountains, doesn't have caves, doesn't have valleys. It's a flat land. So since they have to fight back, they fight back to defend their people anywhere they can. And the Palestinians know that Israel is just trying to, to use that as an excuse to kill more of their people. Because Israel shot at schools, at mosques, at hospitals, at playgrounds, at buildings where they know nobody from Hamas was there with, uh, you know, with their high-tech weapons with pinpoint accuracy. They, they see what they're hitting and they know what they're hitting. So that's a huge lie from the Israeli side. Hamas is fighting for the Palestinian people to free their Palestinian prisoners, to get their land back to help their Palestinian people because they're under illegal occup occupation. Israel wants Hamas to stop on their terms. That's the bottom line. For Hamas to sign on the data line and accept whatever Israel gives or does to the Palestinians. Where, you know, and then they have to keep their mouth shut and agree with, Hama uh, with Israel. Hamas doesn't have the right to say no to anything. Who with dignity will have the heart to accept that. If I take what's yours, kill what you love, 
you still want me to li live next to you, like you, and uh, accept anything that you throw at me? That's not gonna happen. I know you wouldn't accept it. This is happening every day though. In Jerusalem, the land where Jesus lived on and walked on, Israel now brings in settlers uh, into Palestinian houses and simply kick them out into the street and take their house. One of the biggest uh, lies about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is that uh, Israel is the peaceful and innocent part of this problem. What I have to say about that is, you, O oh Israel, and your Zionist movement created a myth by bringing people from all over the world to go and inha inhibit a piece of land with people living on it. You created a problem that God knows how you can solve it. Instead of just being just and fair by giving them only 22% of what was their land in the first place, you're actually negotiating how much of that 22% you're going to give them. And you want to control the borders and you don't want to give East Jerusalem back. Anyone with a heart and eyes can see that Israel is unfair and is strictly the law of the jungle where the strong dictates what happens. You have Israeli Jews and rabbis all over the world who stand with Palestinians but you don't see them because the mainstream media is corrupted by the Zionism movement which brainwashed the people worldwide to believing the sky is red even when they see it as blue. My last words to you that I will uh, leave you with is how would you feel if someone would come to your home, kick you out into the street and control your life, beat you up and kill your father and uncle in front of you, harass and rape your mother and sister, make sure to take all your jobs away, you can't provide for your family, those who took your house and land followed you everywhere, you go until you die or simply disappear, give you checkpoints everywhere you go that makes a 10 minute ride, a 2 hour ride. Would you accept that life? If you don't accept it for yourself and nobody else in the world would accept it, why should the Palestinians accept it? Don't accept from the Palestinians what you will never accept for yourself. If you have a heart, if you have conscience, you will see who's right and who's wrong. I want you to understand this has nothing to do with religion. Do not use that as an excuse. This has everything to do with you taking my house away. It's not an Israeli thing. It's not a Palestinian thing. It's a human rights thing. We are so